Hello and welcome. You're listening to the Movement for a Female-Led Society. I am T. Erica Patterson, the founder of our new female-led society. I will be initiating this transition. A female-led society is a society that prefers and embraces the leadership of women. We are putting women at the forefront of our society because for so long, Women have been cast to the side and held back simply because of their gender. Why have women been held back? Well, it's been a tradition in a patriarchal society. It's been a tradition to elevate the man just because he's a man, not by his merits, but by his genitalia. Why? Because I believe at some point in history, men felt threatened by the leadership and the the wit and charm of women. So they created religions. They created rules, social rules to hold women back, to put an undue pressure on them to be quiet so that men would feel better about themselves and men would stand up and have to take a leadership role. But that's all over. We are now initiating a female-led society and we will allow women to reign, to rule, and to take a positive role in our society as leaders. Not just women. Our female-led society is a symbol for all marginalized groups that have been misrepresented and held back from being the best that they can be. So when we say a female-led society, we're standing up for women and we're standing up for people who are discriminated against because of their gender, other races, and economic status, or even ethnicities. If you feel that someone has held you back because of something you can't control about yourself, we're standing up for you and we're giving you a chance to become the leader that you want to be if you want to become one. Yes, and I say if. That is the reason our female-led society advocates for women and other marginalized groups because I do realize that not every person wants to be a leader. Not every person is capable of being a leader. So we can't force the burden of leadership onto all women because all women are not capable of leadership and they don't want to. So how do I differentiate between how can it be a female-led society if all women aren't leaders? Well, those who want to are given the opportunity to without hindrance. And those who are not female and they want to stand up and become a leader, all they have to do is learn and adhere to the 15 principles of feminine power. This allows these principles, if you learn them, they will allow anyone to become a leader. They will give you the skills and the wisdom that you need to become an effective and gracious leader in our society. So we're not led by feminine genitals. We're led by feminine principles. And this is going to make all the difference between a patriarchal society and our new female-led society. Because our feminine principles would never allow for the things that a patriarchal society has allowed for, like wars, competition, greed, making goals based on self-interest instead of the interest of everyone. I personally had to transition to a more feminine leadership model in my own personal guidance for myself because I had been under the influence of patriarchal leadership, thinking that success meant more for me, more power for me, more money for me. Forget everyone else. I was the same way. But once I started to really sit down and think about what this world needs to bring about world peace, which is the aim, the primary aim of our female-led society, what does this world need? What does this world need to make sure that everyone is cared for? When I stopped thinking about my own success or what I determined was success and started to really think about what this world needs at, at the expense of my own perceived success. And I drew up a plan for it. I recognized that I had been 
a patriarchal minded woman. And I had to stop that and let that go. So in my book, A Manifesto for a Female-Led Society, which is available on Amazon, you can read my entire plan for what I think a female-led society should look like, should feel like, and how it should be organized if we want to make a maximum benefit for our entire world. It's pretty much out there. There are a lot of ideas that people would consider to be extremely radical or that it can't happen in our lifetime, but... Why not? Anything can happen. Look at our current president. If that can happen, anything can happen. So I plan to be the woman who offers the solution instead of crying about the problem or placing blame on others for things in the world that I see that aren't right. And I think that's the mark of a true leader. Someone who takes action instead of just talking. So that's what I'm doing. I'm trying to take action. I'm trying to teach you and everyone else how we can bring about world peace through uplifting women and other marginalized groups and allowing the best of the best to rise to the top. People who are led by our 15 principles of feminine power, regardless of gender. So do women automatically make better leaders? Hmm. This is a question that has been asked so many times and there are arguments for both sides of the spectrum but as the founder of our new female led society i want to say that i do not think that women make better leaders not in general i don't think that you can take any woman off the street and make her a leader i don't think that just because a person is a woman then automatically she should rule. Automatically she should get the the leading spot. Like I mentioned before, not every person wants to be a leader. Most people don't want to be a leader. Most people just want somebody else to tell them what to do so that they can do it. Because their life is easier. They don't have to think. They don't have to be responsible. And some people just don't have the skill or talent to be able to make decisions for other people and stand by them to deal with the repercussions. That's what makes a leader. You can make decisions for someone else and yourself, the best decisions, and you can navigate whatever results come. So I do not believe that all women have those skills. I do not believe that all men have those skills. I believe that certain individuals have the desire to be a leader and they should be allowed to. Whether it's a man, a woman, a non-binary person, or it doesn't matter what description you call yourself. If you have the desire to be a leader and you have the skills to make decisions for others that are not selfish based on your own selfish motives, then you should be a leader. Are women better leaders than men? No. Women can have the same selfish attitudes and patriarchal mindset that men have. But when we train women who want to be leaders to by the 15 principles of feminine power, and we train men by the 15 principles of feminine power, and we ingrain those principles into them, and we allow them to demonstrate those principles, and we sit back and watch their leadership style, yes, those people will become the best leaders. We're not looking for feminine genitals in office and ruling our land, we're looking for people who are inspired by the feminine principles, the feminine mindset of inclusion, of seeing a problem, fixing the problem, of nurturing, of being a light when in the darkness. All those 15 principles of power will help to guide any leader and any person can truly become a leader if they want to by learning those 15 principles of power and making them a part of their lives. But there's no way that I can generalize and say that all women make better leaders than men. Neither can I say that all men are evil and make terrible leaders. That's simply not true. We have experienced progress in this world as a result of the leadership of men throughout history. All men are not terrible. All men are not hateful. All men are not there to tear you down. But some men in that 
leadership pool, do not have the skills to effectively lead without selfish motives, and that is what we want to get rid of. I plan to create a society where everyone's health and wellness and personal satisfaction is the priority of the leadership. It is not based on the idea that the more money I personally make, the more successful I become. It's a centralized government based on the happiness of the people. And that's how we measure our success based on the happiness and well-being of the people emotionally, psychologically, and physically. We're taking care of our world. We're bringing peace to the hearts and lives of everyone. We're helping to shape them emotionally. We're teaching them how to love each other. We're taking the pressure off of them, the capitalistic pressure to earn more, achieve more, make more money for corporations. We're taking that pressure off. We're giving everyone jobs. We're giving everyone health care. We're taking the burden off of um, social expectations. There is no expectation of marriage. There is no expectation of having children. There are no expectations of walking a fine line of life success by doing these certain things so you can truly design your life the way you want it to be. This is feminine leadership. This idea of feminine leadership, in my opinion, is superior to what we have established already. This is why the leadership of women is important to think about how a woman, a smart and wise woman, not any woman, a smart and wise woman, a true leader would lead. And take those best principles, take the best ideas that she has and how she would rule and teach it to everyone else. So, yes, men can become leaders in our female-led society. And they can stand beside women, non-binary people, transgender people, or anyone who's been marginalized. As long as you decide you want to be a leader and you can demonstrate that you are up, will uphold the 15 principles of feminine power, you can be a leader. Do women make better leaders than men? Mm, that's questionable. Everyone can have an opinion, yes or no. And it truly depends on how you've been impacted by the leadership of women in your life. Some people have had horrible mothers. Some people have had destructive women in their lives will say absolutely not. Some people who have had loving fathers will say, no, fathers are better leaders. So since the answer is subjective, I'm going to put it to rest. No, women are not better than men. No, women are not superior to men. No, women in general do not make better leaders than men. But under a patriarchal society versus a female-led society, uh, a female-led society will come out on top as more beneficial and that's leading towards our idea of world peace. We want everyone to have the chance to be trained to become a true leader. And we want to eradicate this thinking of dominion, aggression, and capitalistic power. We're getting rid of it. And we're replacing it with love, nurturing, understanding, and making sure that everyone has a place in our society, feels feels welcomed in our society and and feels that if they have a brilliant idea it will be heard and not diminished we have a lot of work to do to change the mindset of our society but why not start working on it right now if you want to join us please visit femaleassociety.org sign up for our newsletter it's all kind of interesting information about um, female leadership the man's role in the female-led society, and how you can be an active part in initiating and pushing forward our concept of a female-led society. I'm always open to discussion. I'm always open to people joining the team. I'm always open to men who want to um, help with administrative tasks. We have a program for that. 
We can see this happen in our lifetime. We can experience peace and prosperity. We can set up our children for a future that honors who they are and the best of who they are instead of pushing them to be something that they're not. You're listening to the Manifesto for a Female-Led Society, the Movement for a Female-Led Society. I am Tierica Patterson. Thank you so much for listening, and I'll talk to you soon.